Logging on to Jackpoint. Welcome to Jackpoint, Omei. Oh Your last connection was severed 17 hours, 23 minutes, 5 seconds ago. Today's heads up. Are you looking for inspiration for your own runs? Run a fall of Raz? Maybe going to Vegas hoping you'll get some big bucks? We've compiled a story that'll have you covered. Incoming. Having trouble with newbie runners? We've got what you need to get you up and trained in a jiffy. Wondering about creative ways to deal with that snitch? Wonder no more. Our Lone Star Retirement Package will have him packing. Wondering what spiritual tradition is right for you? Join the Church of Odin. It'll teach you to be a man. And you'll never have to worry about a pesky ghoul attack ever again with the spirit package. Crossed a corp? Better go on the run fast. And drop those flashy orcs. Being known for your penile implant will just get you killed. Or worse teacupped. When we last left off, the team had been recruited at gunpoint to kill the proxy nightmare hacker two times, as he had made off with Ra's experimental data dog. The mission was to neutralize the hacker and retrieve the dog to have the data on it erased. The payment was 1 million new yen and, after a little nagging from 2D, the dog itself. The punishment for failure, death. Because of the aforementioned proxy nightmare hood, the team was bound for Vegas to hunt down a master of disguise named Joy, one of two times confidants, a compulsive gambler, Joy would be somewhere in Vegas. The problem, of course, was that he could also be anyone in Vegas. The team had a few hours on the plane in which to prepare for this first leg of their mission. Dervish did some skill soft training, tank dicked around and watch tried. 2D compiled and registered a few more sprites, and Geppetto had a more interesting task. You see, Geppetto was not happy with his spirits. The callousness of one particular spirit of man had nearly cost Dervish his head, and had in fact already cost him part of it, if not the whole. Dervish seemed to be mostly back to normal, but the high caliber rifle round jiggling around in his skull was a serious reminder that all was not well on the astral plane. Geppetto traveled to the plane of his mentor spirit, adversary. Adversary manifested as his doppelganger, cruel and pale and eerily beautiful. The two eyed each other for a brief moment, and then Geppetto posed his request he wanted his spirits to be properly obedient. Adversary grinned, revealing thin, sharp teeth, and chuckled deeply. It promised Geppetto that his spirits would follow his every whim to the letter and the pardon the pun spirit, whatever he wished, if he would but allow adversary a small, service, anything, Geppetto said. Adversary made his offer thusly it had been so long since he, a spirit of innumerably high force, had smelled the human refuse on the material plane, had tasted their rancid air, and, why, Geppetto really had no purpose for sleep anymore, being a banshee, no, adversary wanted, needed, an avatar, and if Geppetto could just sleep nightly as normal, then he would be returned to his bed, unharmed, by morning, and all would be as it should be as far as he was concerned, a pittance, really. Like a timeshare on life. Archangel's iPath. Yes, capture. The Archangels must have been passive at this moment, otherwise they never would have allowed Geppetto to do this. Geppetto agreed, with a few exceptions. One no endangering the team, directly or indirectly. Two any team member could tell adversary to wake Geppetto up in an emergency, and he would hold up to it. If adversary or his proxy, as it turned out, a force 14 black magic free spirit felt that this was being abused, he could call for a renegotiation of contract. Adversary made a toothy smile and said that this would be fine by it. It would hopefully be seeing Geppetto, soon. With a smile, Geppetto woke up in his airplane chair and knew that it was the dawn of a new era. The team arrived in Vegas and felt like they were being watched. They didn't look like mobsters well. Everyone except Geppetto, gamblers, or depressed salary men looking to feel something. So the city wasn't especially welcoming to them. The ambience just wasn't there. Even the Matrix felt weird to 2D. All gambling sites and virtual slot machines and none of the pervasive corporate propaganda of Seattle. Vegas being a mob controlled town in Nang territory probably had something to do with that. Not wanting to ring anyone's bells, the team bought two rooms at a mid price Radisson off the strip and began setting up. It was at this point in the session that Tank dropped the bomb. Namely that this would be his last session because his player suddenly had family obligations on our normal shadow run nights. None of us were, say, bawling that he had to go, but it was kind of dick on all involved that it had to be dropped on us so suddenly that he was dropping out of the game. He also couldn't reschedule, because this was family obligations of the his dad, the only member of his family who drives. 
believed that games were a waste of his time and banned his son from playing them so he could have more family time variety. INB4 shouldn't be playing with high schoolers, he is older than I am. Considering Tank was deeply entrenched in the plot and his sister had been effectively adopted by 2D's girlfriend by this point, there wasn't really much of an option left. He had to disappear or get killed off, because the GM did not particularly relish the thought of Gmsin Tank's character for the entirety of the two times arc, which he had planned as a year-long multi-continent bonanza. So, the GM ensured Tank's player it was okay. And although he was a little annoyed that all the meta plot he'd written up for Tank was getting abandoned there by wasting hours of his time that Tank would get written out of the story, Tank's player didn't exactly like the sound of this, but he didn't have much of a choice because he was bouncing at this point. So, that night, 2D called up his girlfriend to make sure that she and Ariana were okay, Dervish decided to take a walk to scope out Vegas, and Geppetto fell asleep and promptly got back up again. He cordially introduced himself to 2D who in turn identified himself as a big fan of Adversary's work and offered him some AR shades. Adversary O, oh, and these are, 2D AR shades. I get rights to the footage. By the way, Adversary O, oh, you mortals. Well, try to keep up, hacker. With a piff, he was gone. A few minutes later, there was a click behind 2D's head. 2D sighed loudly and put his hands up. 2D make it quick, please. The runner behind him responded with a terse K, before pulling a cloth over his face and chloroforming him. Across the strip, Dervish didn't notice the immensely strong troll fist shadowing him until the arms locked around his throat, putting him in a sleeper hold. 2D blinked groggily and woke up. He glanced to his left, and saw Tank. Then he glanced at his right and saw Tank. Upon closer inspection, he realized that his was more like there was half of Tank on either side of him, and more elsewhere in the room resembling something like a very clean gibbing. Creepily enough, some of the parts were still breathing. Well, gurgling, rather. The whole hit reeked of magic. Naturally, 2D flipped a shit, staggered out of the room, and called 911. An operator picked up and announced, Emergency services. Sir, what seems to be your problem? 2D was still cogent enough to deny all involvement with this fucked up bullshit, lest he be implicated in shadow running. 2D there's a dead troll all over my room and I don't know how he got here. Operator. 2D RRR. Operator will send a crash cart team right away, sir. Hold tight. 2D fuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuu
Crash cart operative sir, what did you say happened? 2D began openly bawling, grasped weakly at the Evo soldier's hazard suit, and dribbled snot all over it. 2D I don't knew you were. I was here with my, 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 my friends, and I don't know where they are, and then this big girl troll came into the room, and he was gone tay, gonna, ta ta ta, cc operative um, take your time, sir, 2D ta ta take advantage of me, e, at this point 2D broke into hysterical sobbing, falling to his knees and melodramatically trailing snot and tears all the way down the operative's hazard suit, 2D and then I woke up and he was dr'd, at this point, Crash Cart took custody of the body and decided to cede control of the crime scene to Hardcore, the local cop corporation. Now, let me go down the list of PMZ professionalism, starting with Raz Firewatch. Firewatch the best of the best, multinational commandos equivocal to a high-tech, magically active Navy SEAL Corps, knight errant the mass-produced, military-scale foot soldiers of Raz, whom Firewatch recruits from. Lone Star the crappy corrupt version of Knight Errant, with shittier training and gear. Wildcat Lone Star without the money, protocols, or restrictions. Hardcore the ghetto reject version of Wildcat. So, a bunch of dudes in ill-matching grey armor jackets with peeling patches that read hard orbs. The C and D were kind of stuck together but the graphic design was shitty and wildly non-standardized firearms, all with the safety off, poured into the apartment. 2D was promptly questioned by a depressed inner city orc who seemed to be stuck in a rut, and a Hispanic human who seemed way too eager to read conspiracy into things. Without any prompting from 2D indeed, at first he did not let 2D speak at all. The human decided that Tank was part of an evil shattering team that was going to rob rape kill maybe all of the above poor Stuart the it specialist, and after a disagreement over the loot there was a ferocious gunfight that somehow ended with no bullet holes in the walls, and Tank lying in cleanly separated pieces around the hotel room. To illustrate this, he swung around a troll sized troll meter human adjustment Ruger Super War Hawk Magnum pistol, with the safety off. He nearly cold cocked his partner multiple times, only slowing his wild gesticulations when he accidentally planted around in the hotel room's couch, punching a fist sized hole through it. The partner agreed that evil shadow runners were probably to blame, if only to get his partner to stop swinging a 50 cal handgun around like a parade batching. 2D decided that he wanted these two numbskulls out of his room, and without any physical ability to throw them out, he instead resorted to weepy mode again. This time with the added unpleasantness of mild racism. 2D I heard about runners on the news. They have blades in their arms and replace their eyes with robot eyes and I hear they put rockets in their legs for illegal street racing like in the movies and I hear a lot of them are orcs. They sound like horrible people. Orc officer rockets in. What? Human officer exactly. There's our suspect. Look for orcs with rocket legs. 2D would have been be more worried if hardcore as an organization wasn't actively incompetent. As the officers cleared out, though, they passed by Dervish, who stepped out of the elevator as they entered it. The look on the orc officer's face as Dervish announced officers, and passed by them was a thing of beauty. 2D giggled like a schoolgirl as Dervish approached his room. Dervish what's so funny? 2D nothing, just this thing with hardcore. Oh, dude, you will not believe how Tank just died. So, at this point, 2D is feeling dandy because Evo hasn't pegged him, and Dervish is back to provide him with much needed security. Which is good, because he had an errand he wanted to run, considering it wasn't that late in the night by this point. 2D had plugged John for any Taminous hideouts in the Vegas area earlier, since they'd been incredibly useful thus far, and considering that they were seeking out a presumably hostile face adept, they'd probably have a body to dispose of soon. He'd gotten the address on a back alley black clinic off the strip, but didn't want to go marching into ghoul territory without a little backup. Hence, the dervish. As they approached the clinic, there was a cavalcade of noises. A weird drilling noise sounded from a basement window, while the thuck 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 of hammer blows echoed from behind the clinic. Dervish clutched his head, the drilling noise putting him into PTSD mode from all the surgeries that his poor, metal lace bones sustained, requiring 2D to keep him steady for a moment. Curious of a potential threat, 2D peeked around back to check the drilling noise and saw, Geppetto, wearing fancy AR shades, crucifying a dude in the alleyway upside down. This was where 2D got a message from one of his contacts, Hortsource, a chaos engine info broker. Hortsource there's this guy on the forums who said he knew you. Asked for everything I could find on the crucifixion of St. Peter. Any, uh, any comment on that? 2D texted back, you wouldn't believe it if I told you. 
2D. Which is why, once I've blurred out all the faces and voices, the feed is going up on the boards tonight. So, since, due to his contract, adversary was weirdly the safest place to be, 2D dragged Dervish over into the alleyway. As Dervish took his meds and recovered, they made small talk with Satan that he reenacted St. Peter's death with what we later found out was a local deacon. When Dervish recovered, he and 2D entered the clinic, walking through the front door. There, they met a very pleasant, pretty young nurse, who promptly changed her tune and her magically maintained disguise, back to her natural ghoul rictus when 2D name dropped John. She escorted them down into the basement, where they met David Pittweiler, an old ghoul who's so far gone that he talks through a vocoder because his vocal cords fell out. A talented street doc, Pittweiler operated while inside a special hazard suit that basically held his body together. Dervish, always a fan of invasive surgery, promptly submitted to a diagnostic while the opportunity was being bounced around, and this is when Pittweiler broke an issue to 2D and Dervish. Namely that, unlike the team's suspicions about Dervish, he wasn't a clone. He was clones, plural. A big ol amalgamation of Bioware that thought it was a dude. Pittweiler had no idea how he was even alive, being functionally a Frankenstein's monster. Hello, GM's justification for his amnesiac character taking the biocompatibility and typo system qualities. So, the sort of expenses that went into Dervish were the sort of thing that, obviously, only the Big Ten could manage. Pittweiler casually warned Dervish that he was, probably wanted by at least one of the Big Ten. Moreover, if he was captured by any of them, he could probably expect to not live long. At least not without seeing a vivisection table. That learned, Dervish asked for more cyber blades, please. Namely, a 2D added that there was a dude nailed to the wall of the clinic that would probably need disposal. Pitwheeler sighed melodramatically through his vocoder, and sent the nurse to do some house cleaning. The next day, Dervish was still under the knife and 2D had only had about half a night off sleep. Having instinctively watched on Dervish's surgery to make sure that there was no funny business thankfully, Pitweiler only ate the parts that wouldn't be going back into Dervish anyway. Geppetto had a full, extremely restful night of sleep, and resisted a giggle when he learned that Tank had been brutally murdered. 2D, wanting to make some more contacts in the Vegas area since contacts were the only way to find a shapeshifter in hiding, trolled the job market on a Jackpoint subsidiary, and found a promising lead. Namely, amongst all the you can you beat up this nerd for cash offers, there was a comment that read, I have an offer of employment for young entrepreneurs such as yourselves. Meet in room 432 of the Caesars Palace Hotel and Casino at 430 p Meet in room 432 of the Caesars Palace Hotel and Casino at 4.30pm today if you are interested. J. While 2D was working on this lead, Geppetto, the mafia member in the party, tried to track down the local Don, but to no avail. Considering the consortium owns like half the casinos on the strip and he could have been in any one of them. Dervish, with his tiny list of contacts, went out on a complete fucking limb and asked his sensei if he knew anyone in the area. Weirdly enough, the reclusive Mexican gladiator gave us the best lead. He had served, you see, with a special ops unit during Operation Omega, and one man from the team, whom currently went by Donald Kane, had gone on to become the security director for the consortium. With a few new contacts and a Johnson meetup coming, we prepared to take the hunt for joy and earnest. That's where my hastily scratched out scribblings about this session run out, so I'll have to plug my GM and the other players to recall the details in between us and the main joy run. I'll get back to you guys soon, maybe tomorrow. Now if you don't mind, I'm going to run off to dinner since I've been doing this for hours. Next time Shadow Run Story Time 6, in which the team hunts joy and gets a new infiltrator. Uh, part Tank, like, you know, I must say, like, okay, look, we all know Tank's prayer was a bit of a dickhead, like, you know, with Deadman and Trait and all, like, you know, he, he wasn't really the nicest type, but it's a little shame, like, you know, it's not nice that, you know, he just, and he seemed to be loyal, like, you know, it's a little shame to be torn away from it, you know, I don't know, maybe I'm a bit too sentimental, but who knows, uh, but no, it was really good to see, like, you know, another city in the Shadowrun universe, I've been reading a lot, like, you know, I've been on, like, the wiki and stuff, just sweating it the last few days, because, like, I don't know, after watching that cyberpunk, um, game pay, game, well, well, quotation marks, gameplay versions that had, like, you know, that big banner across the top saying, like, oh, it might, it might look different, like, it's gonna be a, like, I'm worried for the new Cyberpunk game, it might end up, like, you know, like, Watch Dogs, I'm sure you just remember what, like, how much of a shit show that was whenever Watch Dogs was finally brought out, but no, um, 
I also like, you know, I really enjoy the Shadowgun universe. It's a great sandbox. You know, that's what I love about 40k universe. It's a fucking sandbox where you can do, like, you know, you fit the rules in and you can do whatever you want within leagues because it works. You know, there is only war after all. <clears throat> but no, um, I fucking love it. But hey, if you haven't noticed, I was using a few new songs in the background and uh, I'm working on something. It's a bit of a bit of an experiment you could say and uh, i don't know how it's gonna work out but um hopefully by the time you're watching this, this is live it, it might be live by tonight maybe tomorrow at the time of recording this so we'll just find out but here i'll put links in and i'm not going to say what it is but i think it's pretty cool and it's on my second channel and it's not going to interfere with the uh, content that you guys normally get. It's not going to, like, you know, distract me from anything. I'm still going to be doing, like, you know, everything as I would normally do on this channel. This is just something a wee bit to the side. Something a wee bit extra that, I don't know, I think it's pretty cool. And I think you guys might enjoy it too. I don't know. You know, it's, uh, let's just call it an experiment of sorts. Like, you know, we'll just see how it turns out. But I, I know I've got, <laughs> I don't know, I, I, I don't know. Maybe, maybe I just get weird ideas sometimes. I'm like, oh yeah, fucking right. This sounds really cool. Let's do this. And then, no, I'm James, mate, this is gay. And like, no, it's not. I'm telling you. I don't know, like, who knows, like, links down below, as always, check out the Discord, and peek on if you really enjoy it, and shall see you in the next video. If you haven't already, check out my Redbubble portfolio, you might just find something you like. This, this is, is not okay, this needs to stop now, this is cancer, this, this is so much cancer, that I can feel the tumors growing on my back. And it's way down heavy on me, and it's not okay. Can you help a nigga out and just stop this? Please?